Well, hi to everyone today, again, especially hi to Flame, who I feel like I haven't seen for weeks and weeks. Uh, Monica, James and I, we're badly missing you guys. We're missing your crazy dancing and your um, wonderful praying and all your arts, artwork that you do and all of this. Um, looking forward to seeing you again at some point. So here we go with George Muller, the George Muller story, part four. So you know by now that George Muller was born about 200 years ago, uh, was a wild boy. We've talked about how his, his heart was cold, he was against God, he didn't really care about other people, and how God came um, and changed his heart, and in the end set his heart really on fire. Um, there's the fiery heart uh, with zeal to serve him. Um, and this young German man came uh, from where he lived and traveled across to the UK and ultimately God led him, sorry the heart picture is falling down here, ultimately God led him to Bristol uh, where he worked with his great friend brother Craig um, and others uh, and during that time he was nearly 30 by now um, and he had learnt from God to live by faith, he felt that that was how God wanted him to live, they would pray for money uh, for their needs, for their rent, uh, this is a picture of the chapel where the work in Bristol began um, and he, at that time when he'd learnt to trust in God and see God provide for him, he always spoke of God after that as the living God. And he um, wanted to tell other Christians about this and wanted to prove to Christians um, around the world that God was alive and wanted to provide for them and be involved in their lives. Um, and he was also concerned, we've got a picture here of some of the poverty, he was concerned about the terrible conditions in Bristol at that time. Uh, we heard as well last week about cholera that had reached Bristol and he was concerned for the families um, who were in desperate need and particularly for the children. So he prayed to God and God uh, provided for them money to start up an orphanage in this street called Wilson Street um, in Bristol and they rented out a house um, and they brought some of the girl orphans came to live there and very quickly um, the orphan house was full um, and so they and they found that there was a real demand for places for younger ones infants as they called them particularly because of the cholera where parents had died and there was no one to look after the children and so they rented out another house and it's the next house in the street that you can see in that photo um, and then he became concerned about the boys is a picture it's got, it's got lots of the boys this is actually taken in the 19th century in Bristol um, and people were giving clothes for boys and um, and stuff and but they didn't have a boys orphanage so he prayed again and they sought God and they um, they rented out a third house um, and they let the boys come and within about two years of starting it all three houses were full um, they had just under 90 children um, and about 12 helpers in these houses um, and God was providing for them they would pray and he would give money they had times when they had almost no money left and then some, there would be a knock on the door they had times when they didn't have food for breakfast and then there would be a knock on the door and the baker would say felt I should get up early and I want to give the bread for free today and always God was providing for them as well as that, they began day schools in the area. He was miles ahead of his time, really. He believed in girls being educated as well as boys, which was unusual at that time. And they set up um, schools for poor children who couldn't go to school otherwise. Uh, here's a picture of one of them. And this wonderful work in Bristol was going on. And all through that time, God was touching and reaching Muller's own heart. Um, and in particular through the reading of the Bible. Now we've got a wonderful picture, it's probably the first picture we've shown you of him as a man, um, and there he is, he's reading his Bible. And he felt during that time that God began to show him a new way of reading his Bible. He said up until that time he'd read it, and often he read a lot of it, and it was, he said, sometimes like water going through a pipe. It would just sort of wash over him and race across. But he began to see that the Bible was spiritual food. And when sometimes he felt that the fire in his heart was dying down, uh, he, he would read the Bible and eat it, as it were, like food. I'll tell you about that in a second. Not eat the actual Bible, but in his heart eat the words. And it would cause the fire to um, leap up again in his heart. And what he felt was that, what he felt God show him was that all the other books in the world, every other book is full of information. 
And it may be wonderful information and amazing information, but only one book contains spiritual food, and that was the Bible. And he felt God showing that just like with our food, we have to put it in our mouths, we have to bite on it and chew it, we have to take, we taste it, we swallow it, goes into our stomach, and through some amazing, incredible medical process, it, it, it's distributed through our bodies as we need it. Uh, he felt that in the same way, the words of God should be taken. And so he began to read his Bible differently. He would take a verse um, and he would think about it and ask God about it and pray about it and walk up and down uh, the road or his room where he was praying um, and repeat it to himself. And as he did, something wonderful happened in his heart. Um, and he felt that it taught him he, he, that he was learning to pray much better because of how he was reading the Bible in a new way. So we're just going to take one verse from the Bible, and I thought I'd throw this out as a bit of a challenge for Flame. If you've perhaps never learned a Bible verse before, have a go at learning this one. Um, and it's a verse from Psalm 121, and it's verse 2, and it says this, My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And in the past, Muller would have just read that as information, but instead he began to, do, he began to read it like this. So he thought, my help, wow, I can get help. There's help for me. There's help for me in any situation I'm in, uh, with my finances, with my health, with impossible people maybe around me. There's help for me. Um, there's help for, for my life. And then he read the next bit and it says my my help comes from the Lord wow where does my help come from my help comes from the Lord not just from my friends or my family not just from looking something up on Google not necessarily from the government if you've been furloughed and you've got still got money coming in but he but he saw that God was the ultimate provider my help comes from the Lord and then the last bit of the verse who made heaven and earth Wow, that's a pretty big person to get your help from. So this God who's made the far reaches of the universe and all of its wonders and the orbits and the planets and this old, own, our own extraordinary planet <clears throat> with its amazing sun and moon and all that's happening around us and then on the earth, the wonders of the animals and the plants and the food and our human bodies with our eyes and our ears and our hearts and all the cells and all the extraordinary things that happen in our bodies, all of this made by God, every atom on earth made by God, not one atom made by man, every single thing made by God. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And then by the time he'd finished reading that verse, he was starting to pray, oh God, maker of heaven and earth, would you provide for our orphanage today? Would you provide food? Would you provide clothes? Would you provide rent? Remember, they were looking after um, nearly 100 people, including the, the helpers and the people who were working there. And it began to change how he prayed when he learned to read the Bible like that. And I'm really praying that God would help me more to... Uh, allow this this um, this meditating to happen in my own heart in my own thinking so that um, these verses become um, life for me and they cause revival in my heart um, that's what I'm praying at the moment and so he became so thrilled with the Bible and the fact that it was completely different from any other book that he set up an organization with Brother Craig and other men who were in Bristol at that time and they began to send out hundreds and hundreds of Bibles to people who couldn't afford them. They began to send Bible translations out to missionaries and they began to print as well many gospel tracts, little messages about the gospel message of Jesus it was another part of the work that he was doing and they never again they never appealed for money they just would pray and God would provide for them amazing so this was happening he'd been in Bristol now for about eight years and this is all looking very wonderful and numbers of people are becoming Christians and then suddenly he gets a letter and the letter throws a spanner in the works and I was going to just leave it for this week, but I thought you, you'll be annoyed thinking, oh, I want to know what was in that letter. So this is what was in the letter. The letter came from someone who lived further down the road in Wilson Street. And essentially what the letter said was, Mr. Muller, we've got a problem. You've got nearly 90 people here with 
oh, nearly, nearly 90 children, I think it was 82 children, living in three houses. They said the noise in the street when they're out to play is ridiculous. And I don't know if while this has been going on, you've heard in the background some voices shouting. And that's because our street, the street where I live, is a play street. Um, and it used to just be one hour, one hour a week that it was a play street. But now in the lockdown, it's become a sort of play street a lot of the time. And there's only about, I don't know, 10 children playing out there, but it's pretty noisy. Can you imagine the noise with, with 82 children playing in that street? And then the neighbour also said, and the smell from the drains is very bad. It's increasingly bad, Mr Muller. You've got to do something about this because there were too many people living in these houses. Um, and so instead of becoming distressed and anxious, he did what he had learnt to do and he prayed uh, to the living God to provide for them. And next week we'll find out what happens. Uh, there's also a, a, an amazing, so there's some amazing twists and turns in the rest of the story. So let's pray. Lord, we just want to thank you so much uh, that our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Father, we pray that you'd help us to learn that verse in flame this week. Father, we, I pray you'd help us not just to learn it, but to think about it, to do what George Muller did and to keep it in our hearts so it becomes like spiritual food. Uh, Father, we pray that you'd help us this week as we read our Bibles and as we think about these wonderful things. Amen. Amen.